Uh, thanks for joining us, Chief Joe. So the arrival of the of Bayotuk remains uh, earlier this week. How, it was a surprise to some of us. Uh, you've been working on this, though, for a long time to have these remains repatriated, the, the group that you work with. How did you feel when they made their way back to Newfoundland? Well, it's an incredible feeling. Uh, the night that they arrived in Newfoundland, uh, there was quite a crowd of uh, all politicians and Aboriginal leadership there. It was a, a great moment, but I think yesterday was probably more of a spiritual moment, uh, thinking back on when I first saw the remains and thinking about the 200 years that they've been gone. Yeah. It was, it was an incredible uh, day yesterday, and even, even today it's still around. I could feel the presence of something that wasn't wasn't there before, mm. even though they're very locked in a box at the museum. It's still a pretty special spiritual moment. Yeah. Was it just the remains that were returned? I understand there were some cultural items that had been uh, robbed from their grave as well. I'm, I'm not sure if that's what's in. I, I haven't seen inside the box once it rem arrived in uh, at the at the ruins, but I'm sure in time I'll get a chance to see. Uh, so for those who don't know, uh, can you tell us the story about Damastuit and uh, Nono uh, Sabasut? Yeah, basically there were uh, two people that were shot on, uh, on the ice up in, I believe, it was Red Indian Lake by uh, John Payton Jr. According to the history and the documentaries that I've seen, uh, they were shot simply because uh, John Payton Sr., blamed him for stealing something that belonged to him and convinced uh, his son to go along with other people and shot them on the ice. And it was in 1827, I believe, that Cormac decided he would go back and take, their, take the skull from those two bodies and bring them to Britain for study. Uh, and so the oral history, uh, this is interesting to me too, so uh, Mi'kmaq oral history on the island talks of relations between the Mi'kmaq and the Bayotek. Uh, and we recently heard that Miabugeg is doing a genetic study to better understand that relationship. What can you tell us about your ancestors' uh, relations with the Bayotek uh, and why the DNA matters today? Well, DNA is basically uh, done for health reasons and not to uh, show a connection between us and the Bayotek people. Um, you know, we, we grew up with uh, oral history knowing that there was uh, a connection between the two groups of people, our Mi'kmaq people and the Bialik people, and that there was intermarriage. And there was also um, a group of Mi'kmaq people that helped to smuggle, uh, in the later years, to smuggle some Bialik people out of Newfoundland into, on into Nova Scotia. And some of those uh, people went on to places like New Brunswick and married and went on into the United States. Mm -hmm. And that's some of the history that I know, but uh, for sure, there was uh, small groups of people, uh, big other people still living in 1822 when uh, my relative, Sylvester Joe, uh, guided Cormac, who was an explorer from Scotland, mm -hmm. across the island. He was the first non-Aboriginal person to walk across the island. And at that stage, he was looking for uh, Biotic people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that 1822, there were still people alive then. It was only a few years later, five years later, I believe, when uh, he went to take those skulls from uh, their resting place. Where should the remains go now? You said that they're still in a box uh, at the, in, in St. John's. Where should those remains go? Well, when, when we had uh, the gathering a few nights ago, uh, the Premier said they're home. And, and I didn't mean to be, uh, you know, correct the Premier, but those remains are not home yet. They're in Newfoundland, yes, but they're not home. I think. Uh, there should be a discussion be between us and government and uh, other people mm -hmm. uh, to decide where those remains should go. And certainly not in the ground somewhere because uh, they're so famous that they wouldn't last very long. Somebody would take them. But we, yeah. we need to find a place somewhere that uh, is sacred and protected and respectful in a way of, of putting them to rest. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for this. Uh, we'll, we'll wait and see how this all unfolds and where, uh, where they go, but it's nice that they're closer to home than they were. Yes, it's a long journey yet, but uh, they'll get there. Thank you. Thank you.